Hello, Beekman Elementary School. So nice to be talking to you today. It's Wednesday, July 8th, and I hope you enjoy the first few weeks of your summer vacation. So, let's get started with our video for the week. All right, so um, some announcements as we get started with this week's video. Uh, the first one is yearbooks are not in yet, so I'm sorry about that. I know many of you have been waiting for them. You're all waiting for them, and I had said last week that I would let you know when they're in, but they're not in. So the minute they're in, I will let you know, and we'll figure out a way to get you your yearbook. So be patient, Beekman. Be patient, Beekman. Um, but one thing that is in are the fifth grade t-shirts. So the pizza will let me know that the t-shirts are in, and I sent an email out um, two days ago, I think it was on Monday, that you can pick up, if you're a fifth grade student, you can pick up uh, your t-shirts. So have your families check out that email, it has all the explanation in there about getting your t-shirts. Um, thank you to the PTA for making sure this tradition continues, and that uh, fifth grade students get a t-shirt like fifth grade students have gotten each year. So it's great, and thank you very much. So, question for you, actually three questions. Do you like Disney movies? Do you like trivia? You want to see some other Beekman Bears? Well, if you said yes, then you should come to Disney Trivia Night. It'll be on Tuesday, July 21st at 6 p.m. So, an uh, email with all the details will be going out very soon to families. Um, you'll have some information there about how you can participate in some Disney trivia. You can compete against other Beekman Bears. Maybe we can get some adults competing against each other. It'll be a lot of fun. Um, so. Tell your family, look for an email from me about Disney Trivia Night. That's going to be on Tuesday, July 21st at 6 p.m. There will be sign-up information and all sorts of details about how you can participate if you want. And a very big surprise for me, the Joke Master is back. Yeah, Logan Catapano. This summer, he's not taking a break. He wrote to me and sent me another joke. So I thought it was awesome. we got to use the Joke Master's joke. So here it is, coming at you as a surprise joke. What do you call a witch who lives on the beach? A sandwich. <laughs> That's right, a sandwich. Thank you, Logan. Thanks for keeping those jokes coming, and I really appreciate you keeping those, uh, those gears turning and thinking up some more jokes. So if you have more, send them to me. Can't wait to share them. So if you saw last week's episode, um, there was a Where in the World segment, right? It was our first Where in the World segment. And you saw me um, sharing a very cool spot with you. Um, and we had four students wrote to me. And each one, every student who wrote, all four, they had the correct answer. And that's right. Great job, Logan, Franco, Christina, and Nicole. I was on the Hudson River. So great job. Good guess. Um, glad you figured it out. Um, and for those of you who watched, did you know the bridge that was behind me that I showed you? Um, some of you may have thought that it was the walkway over the Hudson, because I know many of you have probably gone on the walkway, but it wasn't. From far away, it does kind of look like it, but it wasn't. That bridge that I showed in the video from last week was the kingston Rhinecliff Bridge. Um, so that's about 20 miles north of the walkway over the Hudson. Um, obviously, it goes over the Hudson River, and you can take it from like Red Hook and Rhinebeck and Rhinecliff across the river to Kingston. Um, so maybe you've been over that bridge. You know, ask your family; they'll be able to tell you if you have. Um, if you've ever been over that bridge, you may have noticed that there's a great view of the Catskill Mountains from that bridge. Outstanding view of the Catskills, um, and also there's a really small airport next to it. So if you're lucky and you're going across that bridge. There are times where you can be going over the bridge and a little airplane is flying right over your head, taking off or landing uh, at the airport. So just some little neat facts for you about the kingston Rhinecliff Bridge. So I told um, our teachers about the Where in the World segment for these weekly videos, and I'm really happy to announce that several teachers said they wanted to participate. Isn't that great? Yeah, I thought so too. So um, let's take a look at our first guest for the Where in the World segment slash challenge. Um, can you guess where this teacher is? Good morning. Do you hear that? I'm not too far from Beekman.
And this tree is among one of my favorite sights on this path. And I exit the woods right into a gorgeous field. So thank you, Mrs. Granger, for sharing that very magical place with us. And students, this one will be tricky because it might look like the woods near your house or really any woods in our area. Um, but I'll give you a hint. Mrs. Granger was near her home in Millbrook and she was on the grounds of a special organization that works to protect and educate about the environment. Hmm. Why don't you pause the video? And using that information that I shared with you and what Mrs. Granger showed us in her video, maybe you could talk with your family, do a little research on the computer, maybe figure out where this place is. Um, so go ahead, pause the video, and see what you can come up with. So, did you figure it out? Hmm, maybe? Alright, well, you won't have to wait uh, until next week to find out where Mrs. Granger was. She was kind enough to send us a bonus video. And in this bonus video, it's got some helpful information for Beekman families so you can visit this favorite place of hers that she shared with us. So this bonus video segment is going to be at the end of this video, and you can check it out. So thank you, Mrs. Granger, for sending that in so that our Beekman Bears don't have to wait a whole week to figure out that really cool place you were at. So uh, check it out. It's at the end, a special bonus segment from Mrs. Granger on where in the world is Mrs. Granger. All right, it's that time. We got birthdays to announce an entire week's worth of summer birthdays. Let's get started. So today, July 8th, happy birthday to Layla Sudlow. Layla, hope you have a great day today. Hope you enjoy it. Happy birthday to you. And then tomorrow, on July 9th, happy birthday to Emery Hutchings. Emery, enjoy. Hope you have a great, great special day. And then on the 13th, we have, uh, let's see here, two. Happy birthday to Justin Disher. Hope you enjoy, Justin. Enjoy your special day. And you share your birthday with Emily Larios. Emily, happy birthday to you on July 13th. And then on the 14th, Sydney Garcia. So, Sydney, it's coming up in about a week. It's going to be your birthday. So, in case you forgot, I just reminded you. Enjoy. And then you share your birthday with Chris Randazzo. Christopher, happy birthday to you, bud. Hope you enjoy it. Have a great birthday. Happy birthday to all our July birthdays. Pictures from Our Vacation by Lynn Ray Perkins So here we see a family going to pack the car. Here we see, looks like maybe dad, he's packing something and thinking about butter tarts. And then there's a girl here and she's thinking, this is going to be so fun. And there's a boy here and looks like he's thinking about climbing a mountain. And there's probably the mom, and she has images of a pack mule. Maybe that's what she feels like, that she's carrying all these bags to the car, so she's like the pack mule. Just before we got in the car to go on our vacation, our mother said, Oh, I almost forgot. And from her bag, she pulled out a little camera for me and one for my brother. The cameras took tiny pictures that shot out right away. We could watch the pictures appear and then peel off the backs and stick them on something. Our mom gave us notebooks to stick them in. They will be souvenirs on our vacation, she said. And this first one that the girl did, it says, I took my first picture by mistake and it shows her feet. We were going to the old family farm. No one lived at the farm anymore, but our grandparents were spending the summer there and we were going to visit them. The old farm was far away, and it would take a long time to drive there. But we had a bag filled with things to do, and when we ran out, we could always look out the windows. Once in a while, there was a bridge or some cows, and after a while, I saw an orange truck with the word yellow on it, and I saw a sign for a motel that had a red roof. I decided that if I had a motel, I would call it the Blue Motel. 
there would be a kind of motel that has separate cottages, and on the outside, they would all be blue, but inside, each one would be different. The jungle cottage would have hammocks. The shower would be a waterfall. There would be a sun cottage. The bed would glow like the sun, but you could turn it off at night. Maybe the lampshade would have clouds on them, and they would spin around the sun, sometimes slow and sometimes fast. And you would need to wear sunblock in there. There would be a cottage where a whole wall would be an aquarium with real fish. Maybe it would have sand on the floor and buckets and shovels. At night you could build a bonfire, but just a small one. The flower garden cottage would have real grass. There would be a moon cottage, all silvery, sil silvery and deep blue, and a star cottage. People would be so surprised when they opened the door and went inside. And by the time I stopped thinking about the blue motel, it was dark, and we were looking for a real, real motel. The real motel was called the Shangri-La. The sign said it had a pool. And then if you look down here in her notebook, there's a little picture she took, and she wrote, there was a pool, but it didn't have water in it. The second day was almost exactly the same as the first day, except that for lunch, we stopped at a place where you could get gravy on your french fries. And except that at the end of the day, we drove up the driveway to the farm. Our dad saw happy memories everywhere he looked. All we could see was old furniture and dust. Our mom said, let's play badminton. The rackets were shaped like potato chips because they had been left out in the barn for so long. We played for about one minute and it started to rain. We ran to the house to wait for the rain to pass over. But it rained for days. And here you can see them playing cards, drawing pictures, Looks like they're building houses of cards, and then everybody's reading in uh, what looks like the living room. No one could believe how much it was raining. Our grandmother said it hadn't rained for weeks. The television got three channels. The striped channel, the channel that showed you what you could watch if you had better TV, and the French channel. Where's the English channel, my brother asked. It's between England and France, said our grandfather, and our mother explained how this was a joke. And again, I'm going to tell you that it, when Grandfather said um, the English Channel is between England and France, it's because there is an English Channel. It's a body of water between England and France. So that's the joke. The English Channel is between England and France. But Grandpa wasn't talking about the TV. He was talking about a body of water. We thought it might never stop raining, but then it did. Let's go swimming, said our dad. He knew about a secret swimming spot. He used to go there all the time with his cousins. We parked the car behind an old apple stand and headed for the secret path. The secret path was even more secret than our dad remembered. This was never here before, he said. But don't worry, it's a big lake. There will be all kinds of places to swim. So we hiked back to our car and drove around looking for one. We drove and drove, but we didn't even see a lake. Maybe we went the wrong way. We stopped at a park where there were hills that had been built by people in ancient times. They built them so that from the sky they looked like a giant sculpture of a serpent. It was a mystery how they did this without being able to see it from the sky. We couldn't see it from the sky either. From earth the hills just looked like hills. Our mother went off to ask for directions. We watched a squirrel eat noodles from a Chinese food container that someone had left on the ground. We got in the car again, but it didn't feel like we would ever get to a lake or anywhere else. And then suddenly, there it was. Some people were putting their boats in the water, and they wanted their dog to go with them. Every time they were ready to go in, the dog jumped out of the boat and swam away. Jesse, they shouted, Jesse, come. But Jesse wouldn't come. They had to get out and wait after him or her. It happened over and over. We watched them for a while. And then we ran all the way out to the end of the dock. A family was fishing out there, a mother and a father and a boy. They smiled and said hi, but then they spoke in another language. They seemed excited. We thought they were telling us about all the fish they were catching. That's a lot of fish, we said. No, said the boy. He spoke English. They're saying that a storm is coming. Look, he pointed, and we saw that it was true. The storm came up so fast that we barely made it to the gazebo in the middle of the dock. I asked our dad if on our next vacation maybe we could go someplace like Disney World. 
I asked our mom, can we do something fun tomorrow? She said, well, actually, we have to go to a memorial service. What's a memorial service? I asked her. It's kind of a church service, she said. Do I have to wear a dress? I asked. Yes, she said. You do. I was thinking that this was turning out to be a stupid vacation when my brother said that there were cars coming up the driveway. A lot of cars. Voices started to float up through the grate in the floor. Then everyone went to a church, including us. The inside of the church was pink. The church service was about our dad's great aunt Charlotte, who had died a while ago. She had been old. Everyone still missed her, and they all wanted to tell stories about her. How, when she was young, she learned to fly an airplane, when hardly any woman, women did that. How once, she chained herself to a big old tree that was going to be bulldozed. And how, before she died, she said, it's been a long journey. I whispered to our dad that Aunt, Sh Aunt Charlotte sounded interesting. He whispered back that she was a little bit ornery, like you, he said. It turned out that practically everybody who was there was related to us somehow, even some people I had never met before. We all went back to the farm. I didn't take any pictures that day, or the next. And here it said, we climbed some trees, everyone had a story about poison ivy, watch out, it's everywhere. And our cousin found an insect called a walking stick. And you can see all these people, all the family, hanging out at the farm. At night, while we were falling fast asleep, some light and a lot of talking came up through the grate. Everyone had to leave after a few days. But even when they did, the old house didn't feel empty the way it had at first. Then we had to leave, too. In the car, I took out my notebook and looked at the pictures. These don't remind me that much of our vacation, I said. My brother took out his notebook, too. Mine either, he said. You should make sure there's a person in the picture, said our dad. Pictures are always more interesting if there's a person in them. I think you're having too much fun to stop and take pictures, said our mom. Maybe we need better cameras, I said. I looked out the window. There were big electrical towers alongside the highway. I took a picture of them. In my mind, they looked like giant robots marching across the earth, carrying electricity along in their hands. It's probably hard to take a picture that shows that, even with a really good camera. And it's hard to take a picture of a story someone tells, or what it feels like when you're rolling down a hill or falling asleep in a house full of cousins and uncles and aunts. There are lots of things like that. But those kinds of pictures I can keep in my mind. The end. And that is the book Pictures from Our Vacation by Lynn Ray Perkins. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that. So um, let's give a, a little time here to think about that book. Let's see, well, what does that book teach us? Um, when I think about this book, a few things that stand out to me are, first, um, I believe it's very important to enjoy moments in the moment and not focus so much on getting the right picture or documenting the moment, right? It's so easy to get caught up in trying to get that right picture or video of the whole thing, and then afterwards we realize we weren't really there. We didn't really watch it. We were so busy trying to get that really good picture. Um, you know, we want to have pictures to remember special trips or events, but as we saw in this book, many of the pictures that were taken by the girl and the boy did not really capture what they enjoyed most about the trip. And second, often what makes a memory special is the people we share it with. Uh, so going to a boring place or doing something that's quote-unquote normal, that can be made so much better because of the people we are with. And those moments are usually unplanned or unexpected, right? You remember the laughter and the joking and the fun and the good spirits. And that all comes from being with other people you care about. So as you enjoy your summer trips with your family or if you aren't taking a trip, remember to enjoy the people you are with and be completely in the moment. So you have vivid pictures in your mind that you can recall anytime you want. Right? Sometimes those are the best pictures, the ones that are always here in our minds, our memories. So take those great memories everybody, have a great summer and enjoy those pictures. Alright, so as promised, you don't have to wait to find out about where Mrs. Granger was uh, in the Where in the World segment. Um, you can take a look at this special bonus segment from Mrs. Granger uh, have a great week, and see you next Wednesday. Bye, everybody. I was hiking at Cary Institute of Ecosystem Studies.
It's only a 25 minute drive from Pokwe. If you shoot right up the Taconic and get off at 44 and follow it, you will come right to Cary Institute. You can learn more about their trails by going to CaryInstitute.org. You click on the About button, Visit Us. Then choose Hike Our Trails. For COVID-19 protection, they have a one-way trail map, so you don't run into anyone else. You can download and print this. The other thing that's great at Cary Institute is they have a flat area that is great for biking, internal roads that have limited traffic. So you can download this and right behind Troop K, you have um, roadways where you can ride round and round. Have fun hiking and biking.